What is the end of all of this? People have been fascinated with this question from the beginning of time. When will things end and how will it end? We surely do not know and this freaks us out in a great way. Because what, where are we going? Especially in a time like this. Is everything for nothing? Maybe for, uh, during this morning we should just turn this question upside down for a moment. Not asking how or why or when will it end, but rather let's ask to what end are we living? And that is to ask what is the goal of life? What is the purpose of life? Why are we alive? What are humans for? Now this question can actually really freak us out sometimes. Like take the book of Ecclesiastes uh, just for a moment. When the writer in Ecclesiastes speaks, he, he writes this beautiful poem and he says, Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What does people gain by all the toil at which, we to at which he toils under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place that it rises. What has been will be, and what has been done will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Or take Shakespeare for example. Shakespeare says, History is a tale uh, told by an idiot, full of sand and fury, but signifying nothing. In a way, when we are faced with this question, what is the end of all of this? It, it, we tend to try to flee from history, not taking history very seriously. Or we try to become so holy in a bad way that we sort of uh, float above history, not caring about these earthly things like sex and food and love and justice and inequality. And so this is my question to you this morning. What is the end of all of this? What is the goal of our human lives? What are humans for? Now in the book of 1 Peter that we are exploring during Easter, Peter is, uh, is struggling with the same predicament. He is writing to this community that is starting to ask the same questions. What is the end of all of this? Why are we still alive? What, what is the meaning of life? And then Peter addresses these issues. Let's read it together from 1 Peter 1, uh, chapter th uh, verses 13 to 21. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at His coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance, but just as He who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. Since you call on a Father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through Him you believe in God, who raised Him from the dead and glorified Him. And so your faith and hope are in God. Let's try and see what Peter is busy doing here, because it's so fascinating. What he's doing is he's placing these believers' lives on a bigger canvas. He's dotting them in the bigger play of God's story. So what he does is he's drawing up this timeline. And it's not a, a usual chronological timeline that goes from beginning to end in the usual manner like we know it. No, he's placing the believers right in the center of God's time. So when we look at his timeline, his timeline has five movements to it. And let's explore that this morning. The first movement that Peter speaks about on this timeline is that he says that Christ was there from the creation of the world. Now that is significant, but why? Why was it necessary for Peter to tell that to his community? Because if his community believed that, that, that Christ was there from the beginning of the world, then they, then they know that this Christ story is in the heart of God. 
And so them struggling to live out this Christ story has a lot of significance. Because even though it feels as if that they are marginalized at the moment in the society that they are living, they may know that they are in the heart, in the center of God's plan from the beginning of time. And how amazing is that to know that as a believing community. In their day-to-day -day lives, God is at work even from the beginning of time. The second movement that he places on this timeline is, uh, is referring to a time when they lived in ignorance. Now very literally, he's writing to a previously Gentile community. And so in that way, they didn't know God. But also in history, there was a time when people didn't know God before it was revealed in Jesus Christ on the cross and in the resurrection. And so when, uh, when he's saying to them that there was a time, uh, a time of ignorance, he's referring to a time when they profoundly failed to grasp the, the character and the purpose of God. But now, in the time where they are living now, they are born, in, they, they were newly born into a new time, into living hope, is what the text is saying. In fact, he shifts his, atten his reader's attention to say that where you previously had desires uh, to do evil, you can now have the desire to follow God and to do God's will. You move from ignorance into knowing God and to uh, comprehending who God is. Uh, it's like uh, this Afrikaans rapper is saying, he says, um, evil, uh, evil is, is makkelijk, maar evil is moeilijk. What is he saying? He says that evil is very easy to do, but God's will, well, that is a little bit more difficult. But what Peter is trying to tell his community is that God, through this new birth, have shaped your desires so that God's will becomes easier to do. The third movement that he places on this timeline is he speaks about the last times in verse 20. Now what's interesting is when we think about the last times, we think about some sort of apocalyptic happening, uh, something to do with end times like we see in the American movies or whatever. But when Peter speaks about the last time, He's actually speaking about the middle point of history. And that was Jesus' death and resurrection. Now why is that important? For Peter, that was a Kairos moment. That was a time when God acted in history that pulls history into itself. So that that becomes the main point, the main emphasis of our whole history. So if you want to ask the question, what is the end of life? What is the purpose of life? Well, then we see what that is in the death and in the resurrection of Jesus. And so Peter reminds his community of that, is that you are living in these last times. Now, what does that mean? You may still experience pain and suffering because you are part of the birth pains that is ushering in this new time, this new time where God wants to do something differently. Now, Karl Barth said it beautifully. He said, it's like a clock with a pendulum, like a mechanical clock. And even though the, we know that through the death and the resurrection of Christ, the mechanics of the clock have been broken, this pendulum of evil is still swinging. We know that there's going to come a time when it stops completely. But for this time, you are still experiencing the pain and the suffering that comes with ushering in this new time of Christ. And then the fourth movement that Peter makes them aware of, is he zooms into their very real day-to-day -day lives, moving into their chronos, into their clock time, what they are experiencing at the moment. And what they are experiencing at the moment is, uh, is suffering and pain. They are being pushed to the side of their community. But then he reminds them that in this time, they are living as born, uh, born anew Christians or whatever. And, and that may be difficult because that might feel like a time where they are living as foreigners in this world. Almost like Egypt, uh, the slaves in Egypt of the Old Testament, they too don't feel at home yet during this time. They feel like they are living as foreigners. But then he gave some really practical advice. He says, during this time, in this time where you live as foreign, for, foreigners, 
Remember these three things. He says, live in hope. Become holy. And live in reverent fear. Now, these three things are very important. It is important because, in a way, this is resistance literature. It, it teaches them how to cope with this time that they are struggling with now. Because if you live with hope, what well, they say of hope is that hope is faith in action. To live with hope is to believe that, that God is really in control of everything. That your life does matter. Because at the end of the day, evil and death and suffering does not have the last word. So they need to live with hope. And secondly, they needed to become holy. Now why is that profound? Because holiness was the exact opposite of the, pre of the previous time that they knew. That time of ignor ignorance. To live in holiness is to strive for God's wholeness, for God's beauty, and not for your own needs and your own desires. And that changes the course of history. And then thirdly, he says that live in reverent fear. Now this is a complicated one, uh, and we don't have time for this uh, all that, this morning, but it's that old Old Testament idea where, where to live with fear is to live in, in such a way that your whole life is directed towards God. So what is he telling them? Hope, and then live in holiness, and live with fear. Orientate everything that you have according to what you know about the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then finally, there's one more movement on this, time, on this timeline. And that movement is the ultimate revelation of Jesus Christ. We see that in the last verse of our text. What Peter is doing is reminding them that even this uh, momentary suffering and pain that you are feeling, even that will end. Because we know at the end of history, even now, Christ is sitting on the throne. Christ is in control of everything and therefore evil and Caesar and those who are making you suffer they are not in control everything is pointed towards God at the end of the day so let's just backtrack here for a moment when we are saying all of this we are saying that Peter took us on a journey on a timeline to show us that God was actively at work from the beginning of time right onto the middle point of time in the death and resurrection of Jesus, up until our present moment, in our present suffering and pain, and also going beyond into everything that is future oriented. But why did Peter need to do this? Well, I think there's three reasons why Peter needed to show his community, but maybe our community as well, why that is important. The first is, is that they needed to make sense of their lives. And so telling them, plotting their lives in the bigger story of God helps them to, to find a place in a story, to have a story. Now they are no longer foreigners without an identity, with no place to go. But now they have a story to ground them. But not only did it remind them of the story, it also builds their identity. Because they know that, that now they are, they are part of this bigger story from the beginning, right until where they are living in hope up until God's future, that becomes their core identity. They are the people who are, who are born anew, who lives with a different purpose. And then thirdly, it tells them that, uh, that they can live this life very practically from day to day. They have to live with hope, they can live in holiness, and they can live with a reverent fear. Maybe it's no coincidence that that this text is paired with the story of Emmaus in the, in the lectionary. Because on the road to Emmaus, we find disciples who have lost all of their hope. They're saying, Where, why does, how does this story make sense? What are we hoping for? Everything that we've hoped to has come to nothing. And in that point, the resurrected Christ appeared to them. And that gave them a real hope to continue their journey and to continue their story. And so... My hope for you this morning is that may we as a community discover that we are part of God's biggest story. That God has been, is now in the present and will forever come alongside us to bring us a living hope.
and may you practically strive to live according